Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to take portraits using the 50 millimeter lens, which is probably the cheapest prime you can buy and uh, most likely will replace your kit lens if you're just starting out. Just to show you that you don't need the most expensive glass or cameras to take good portraits, uh, especially during these times. Unfortunately, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and uh, getting a CV with a proper uh, headshot will help you tons. So I hope this will show you just how easy it can be to take um, a good portrait if you just put in a little effort. Now I'm going to show you uh, the portraits I'm going to be taking will be with a Canon 80D. So it's a APS-C uh, camera, that's a crop sensor camera. And the lens will be the 50 millimeters. So technically it'll be 80 millimeters. Um, I'm not going to be shooting at f1.8. I'm going to be shooting at a a different aperture most likely 2.5 2.8 around that region but I'll see uh, the results that I end up with I'm gonna be taking several shots and um, let's get the intro going and let's get this video started So something like the back of a shed like I have right now would, would give for a good background. There's nothing distracting at all. So it would be a good background to pick. I'm sure you have something in your house that you can take a picture at. Well, it's just your face and nothing else. So inside of a wall, remove the, the picture frames from the wall or something. You can Photoshop the nails in Photoshop later. The outside of a house, anything that doesn't have distracting objects. I think you can hear my dogs in the background. Anyway, just find the, the uh, seamless backdrop as much as possible to take the portrait because that will help you tremendously. Again, just changing the scenery, normal backdrop. This is the back of my house outside. So again, no distractions, just your face. So just find something in your home where you can take a picture where you have no distractions. Here's another example. I'm just next to the wall outside my house. So I can easily remove these lines in Photoshop if I want to. And uh, the footsteps of my dog somewhere, they should like that one, for example, I can easily remove that in Photoshop. So remember, again, you want to find the background that's as seamless as possible. If you don't have a plain wall, then something like this, maybe your shed, something that's not too distracting and focuses on your face. Also, don't be that guy that just goes to Facebook, grabs the first picture you can find of himself, crops the face, and you're done with it. No. Take some effort. Find a good background that will help you get a better portrait. You don't have to have a, a backdrop, like a professional one, seamless one, with all the lighting and everything. But a good backdrop will help you tremendously on getting a good portrait for your CV. Also, just one note, when you're editing someone else's pictures, uh, make sure you don't remove anything from their face without their permission. Obviously, I'm gonna be editing my own face, so I have my permission to do whatever I want. But just to know, it's better to discuss with a person that you're doing the headshot for if they want something removed or left as is, instead of just giving them the finished product and then seeing, you know, backlash you don't want that you don't want any troubles so make sure you discuss everything before you actually take the shot okay giving a little bit of shine on the eyes I think is fine but removing stuff from their face even if it's a scar that you might think is ugly for them it might be something that they're proud of or that they would not like to see touched so make sure to discuss that before you actually edit anything in post okay so welcome to Lightroom uh, this would be that first example uh, that I talked about, the guy that just goes to Facebook, grabs the first picture that he finds uh, and uses it to make a portrait. There's tons of distractions here, sunglasses, I'm wearing a backpack, there's logos on the back. I mean, you just wouldn't uh, use this uh, on your CV or any portrait really. 
Uh, I mean, this is like a personal picture that you post on Facebook to show where you've been or like a good memory, but nothing that you would use professionally. So don't be that guy. Put in some effort, you know, find uh, a good background to, to take pictures on. Okay, and the second example, uh, the picture I took in the shed, one thing I could have done uh, to make it even better was go further away from the background. Even though I think I'm using a 2.8 aperture, uh, let's see, yeah, 2.5 in this case, you can see the settings here on the right at 50 millimeter with a, a 50 millimeter f1.8 mark two. Like I was saying, I was going to use the plastic fantastic. This is not even the, the latest versions. This is a really old model, uh, but anyway, it can get really good results. Um, but in this case, I should have stepped away further away from the background. So he gets even more out of focus right because then you, you wouldn't be able to tell these lines uh, as well could i remove them in photoshop absolutely but again what you do uh, before you actually press that shutter will help you in post the more work you do uh, beforehand the less work you'll have after obviously if you're taking a portrait that you're going to be using in a cv then you want to dress up you, you don't want to have like a hoodie like i have here this was just for uh, demonstration purposes obviously uh, but yeah do take the time to dress up and and look good uh, another thing you want to do is you want to focus on the eyes right that's where uh, your focus should be always always on the eyes um, but you need to be careful with the aperture if you're using a really wide aperture like f 1.4 f 1.8 even 2.8 uh, you need to be careful because if you if you miss focus, then you're going to have maybe your nose in focus and not the eyes or the eyelashes and not the eyes, something but the eyes. Don't just take just one picture. Take several, several pictures to make sure that you have enough to pick uh, a good one. Obviously, shoot in RAW, not in JPEG, because the amount of recovery that you'll be able to, to, to do and post-production with a RAW is much, much higher than with a JPEG. The other example, just outside the house, here you can see I am further away from the wall. So the, the backdrop is actually a, a lot more out of focus. And if you can see the aperture, it remains the same as the other one, 2.5. Um, the shutter speed is a bit slower, I think. The other one, let's see, can't remember. Yeah. 1500 and this was 1400 but you can see the the difference it makes just stepping away from uh, the background a little bit will make it out of focus even more and here's another example this is just a wall inside my house now i'm not a big fan of this uh, color but it's just to show you that if you do have a, a chance to get a seamless background then it's the best option, obviously. Uh, if you turn this into black and white, then you won't be able to tell what type of color it is. But yeah, just pick a seamless uh, background if you can, just a wall or something that has absolutely no distracting objects. If you have some, then step away from the back uh, backdrop. Okay, so here's uh, a picture I took with the uh, 50 millimeter as well. As you can see here, although this one was taken with the 6D Mark II, so full frame. Um, but yeah, you should be able to, to get these results just as well with the 80D or any crop sensor and that lens. Now, this was taken in my kitchen, and forgive me for the mustache, but this was taken for uh, Movember, so that's why I have that. So, going to the develop module, and, and again, this is all about lighting and the back the backdrop if you have good lighting and a good backdrop then half of your work is done so this was the original shot and this is what i ended up with so i'm gonna try to reset it and recreate that so let's reset everything so the crop has been reset it so in this case uh let's see if yeah i i believe i started with my uh portrait black and white uh preset which you can get for free uh, there's a link above in the in the video right now and then I just started going in 
and I'm going to start using the healing brush to remove some things. Again, if this is someone else's body, don't do it. Just ask them first. Maybe they want to do it. Maybe they don't. Uh, look at that. There's a little hair there that I didn't shave properly. And okay, I'm okay with that. Done. Uh, anything else I want to remove? Maybe that, but I think I'm going to be cropping it out anyway. So just per personal preference. Uh, now on the eyes itself, let's get a brush. Select the iris enhance. Okay, make sure you have show selected mars mask overlay. Now, if you want to make the brush bigger or smaller, just click and hold command or control and then use the uh, the mouse scroller. Okay, I'm going to make it just about as big, maybe a little bit smaller. And you just want to go inside the, the iris, the eye even. If you go outside, that's okay. You can just control uh, option or alt to remove it. So it removes the mistake that you did. Okay, now let's go to the other eye as well and paint it away. Should probably remove that little eyelash there. There you can see this one. Uh, okay, so now just untick this so you can see what it does. You see the exposure here? It will just brighten the eyes just a little bit. You see, you can start seeing the the what was behind or in front of, of me being reflected in the eye. Now, you don't want to go crazy or it's going to look like a vampire but just a little bit won't hurt because it pops up the eyes just a little bit okay now the the vignetting on on the picture i think it works uh, in in this case it helps focus in on the on the picture itself let's see what the lens correction does to the picture yeah it removes the vignetting in this case so I don't think I'm going to be removing that. I think I'm going to leave it, which is something I usually don't do. But then what I would do is I would crop in just a little bit. Oops, wrong one. Crop in just a little bit. As so. And I would leave it like this. So that would be the finished product. Now, yes, I did use a preset. But the preset should be used as a starting point. If you're not happy with the results, then you should change what needs to be changed in order to get what the the result that you want. In this case, I'm very happy with how it turned out. In fact, I think it was from this session that I created that preset, so it matches the lighting and everything else I had here uh, perfectly. So that's why I didn't have uh, much work to do. But again. Seamless backdrop. This is in my kitchen. So everybody's got a kitchen hopefully with a nice plain wall And then it's all about the lighting if you have good lighting Then it's gonna help you tons. Don't take the picture at night. Take it when you have enough lighting get close to to a window if you need to um, And it should help you a lot Okay, then when you start to get serious, then you can start adding lighting to your uh, photography, maybe just one speed light uh, and a reflector or two speed lights or two lights um, in this case does it show yeah it does show flash did fire you can see it here this was actually taken with my 70d which i don't have anymore and the 24 to 70 f4 um, at f8 one 160 of the 160 of a second so that's the flash sync speed i believe um, and you can see the reflection of the of the lights here there's one of the soft boxes there being reflected and I was trying to do a Rembrandt lighting which is a lighting technique where one one side of the image is darker than the other and you can see the the shadow created by the nose creates almost like a triangle here now this was not a very good attempt it's like the an almost well done job but then again almost is only good for hand grenades and smoke bombs not for photography so for, you know you do what you do you try your best um i did an okay job but it's it's not as good as i would have hoped for but again once you start getting into it then uh, experimenting is the key taking tons of shots and uh, 
doing your best. Uh, and I cannot emphasize this enough. The more preparation you do before you take the shot, the less work you'll have in post-production. Um, and you'll appreciate that. You'll appreciate having put on all the work beforehand. And then start going crazy, you know, start thinking outside of the box. Like, for example, I wanted to take a, a picture where I looked like uh, an Eskimo or someone that lives in a cold, cold area. So I didn't have a jacket, but my wife did. So I didn't even put it on. I just put on the, the hood that's all fluffy and stuff. So this was taken with the 7200, I believe. Yeah, it is. At F4, at 100 millimeters, ISO 200. You can see uh, the lighting there as well, being reflected on the eyes. Um, I could probably edit this out, remove uh, this, so you cannot see that it's uh, like a modern jacket, because if you have just this part, then it could be anything. But this is distracting, so I could probably remove that quite easily in Photoshop with content aware fill. In fact, you know what? Let's just do that right now. Okay, I'm in Photoshop, so let's go in and go there. Now, let's just do this a quick way. Um, if I'm doing this, if I wasn't doing this for the video, I would take a bit longer, but just to show you, let's go out a little bit. Now you've seen my video, this removing distracting objects. If you haven't, I'm going to put a card on the screen right now and you can do, uh, I go into a bit more detail, uh, on this. So let's, uh tell Photoshop where, where it can sample from. Let's see how good of a job he's doing. Not very good right now, to be honest with you. Let's give him a bit more to work with. Now in this case, I'm not happy at all. So let's cancel that and let's delete content aware to see if he does a better job to sample from a bigger area than just the ones I told him. Okay, that's not too bad. It's slightly better than previously. So now I'm going to go to the brush tool, to the clone stamp. Is that big enough? Yeah, I think it is. Let's start filling this part here. Now, once I'm done, I could bring this back to Lightroom. Or I could just leave it as is and save it from here. That's my decision. But yeah, um, it looks okay-ish. It's not the best in the world, not the best edit, but at least it doesn't have that little, uh, yeah, okay, not too happy. Let's go in a little bit more so it doesn't show just as much. You could still see the jacket if, if I had not edited that. But yeah, now it looks like a proper Eskimo. Okay, and here you can see I took this with a 70D that I used to have and the same 50 millimeter. So this was my starting uh, setup many years ago. Uh, take ISO 400, 250 is of second, 3.5, 50 millimeter, obviously, because that's the focal length of that picture. This was a really fun shoot. Um, maybe I should do this sometime to show you how this is done. Uh, but yeah, get creative. If you're doing portraits, obviously not for a CV, but if you're doing portraits, uh, why not get creative, right? Um, then another one for a Halloween dressed up as an aviator. Uh, this was used, uh, I used my grunge um, preset, which again, you can get for free. Sounds like a sounds like I'm get, I'm a salesman, but I'm giving it away for free, so it's not like I'm making any money out of it. Anyway, uh, you can go the extra mile then and edit this in Photoshop. I believe I already have Photoshop open with this picture. I do. So in this case, I just went online and grabbed uh, Smoke PNG. I just searched for Smoke PNG, and I'm gonna copy everything. I'm gonna paste it here because yes, and now it's really tiny, and that's okay. So we're going to make it bigger and bigger. And let me have more space. Maybe rotate it the other way around. 
and make it slightly bigger okay and accept that enter now I'm gonna go in once it lets me Ooh, okay that's way too strong I think so maybe no not this one what am I doing wake up David the opacity okay maybe that's okay now what I need to do is I want to be able to see the eyes right so I'm going to go to the eraser I don't want it to erase everything because then it just looks completely fake um, see if you have just the eyes coming out of the picture with so much smoke that's just impossible right so let's undo that so the opacity maybe I don't know 30% so that you, you do remove a little bit but not completely does that make sense so the eyes you can see the eyes just a little bit better but you can still tell that there's some smoke in there so this would be a very quick edit of a picture the smoke doesn't look too real to be honest with you but it's just to give you guys ideas right think outside of the box if you like this video hit that thumbs up helps a lot don't forget follow me on social media I'd like to see more of you guys over there too. And if you love this channel, subscribe to it. You'll get notifications once I upload new videos. And until then, stay safe guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.